Hi everyone, we're just going to go through the assembly management in Dynamics 365 Business Central. In terms of assembly orders, the, the first point of start is going into the assembly setup. So we'll get to the assembly setup first. And we'll take a look at this one. This is pretty standard setup. Uh, often you find the numbering, the number series here are empty. Um, I have filled in just the assembly order numbers and the posted assembly order numbers. These are the ones I'm concerned about for this demonstration. But I would encourage you to fill in the other two as well. And if you are trying to fill them in and you cannot find what choices you want, just hit new and create one there. So the assembly setup is your first, first point. Um, then you've got obviously your inventory here. Um, and if I change, if I just reorganize these, I can see all the assembly items that I have already in the system. I've got a few conference package one and so on. Now, these assembly items in their replenishment, if I open them, in their replenishment it says assembly, assemble to stock. Sometimes you can assemble obviously to order, but I'm just going to show you how to assemble to stock. And assemble to stock means I can go to the assembly orders, create a new assembly order, and then I can replenish this item by also consuming the children items. I can, however, actually consume this uh, product or increase the inventory of this product by purchasing it directly. So creating a purchase order and entering this product will increase the quantity on hand of this product, but it will not consume the children items. So the only way you can consume that is using an assembly order. Um, and, and just like I said, it does not restrict you from purchasing it directly. So I'm going to create a new item, a new assembly item. I'm just going to use the standard template. And I'm just going to call this one conference package, um, let's say six. Um, I'll leave the rest of the details for you, pricing, costing, whatever, um, categories, etc and replenishment is what I'm concerned about. So I'll just change that to assembly. I'll leave that to assembly to stock. And then what I can do is I can just click there and I've got it there. So the assembly bill of materials, if I click on that, it opens the assembly bill of materials for this conference package. So I'm just going to add an item from here. Let us say, for example, um, what do we have here? Let us say the desk. So I'll add um, let's say three disks and I'm going to add another item and I'm going to do 14 or 18 chairs. Let's try this chair and we'll just put 18 chairs there. Now I want someone to set this up for me so I'm going to use a resource and I'm going to look for Mark. So I've got Mark there and I'm going to use three hours of Mark's time to do this. Mark is set up as a resource and I can use him in here. Sometimes what happens is I've seen in companies that um, you, you choose an item and when you go through the list here, you actually end up being able to choose non-inventory items as well. Say for example, a service charge that was set up as non-inventory. If you put a non-inventory item in an assembly um, bill of materials and then try to assemble that item using the assembly orders tab, it will not allow you. You can only have items of type inventory in assembly orders um, and items of type resources. So we're just going to remove this line. And now we have our item ready to assemble. So if I go to assembly orders, create a new one. I'll be able to choose the number series and this is important in the assembly setup like we saw before. If you don't have this, the system will allow you to enter the number here but it will give you an error when you try to post it. So you have to add that to the assembly setup. So I have it there and we're going to look for our conference package 6. There we go and we're going to assemble one of that. All right, so the system says that some of the items that we have um, are not enough in the inventory. So do we still want to consume that? We have the choice of saying yes, and that should take it in negative. Um, and uh, what we will do is just to double check everything, we can actually go to navigate item availability by bill of material level. 
and it'll show us what is available there. Now it actually says here that um, an item in the bill of restricts you from making a larger quantity than what is shown in the able to make top item level, which means in the setup of this particular item, um, it actually restricts your ability to consume more than is available. Um, you can choose obviously the variant code and the location code depending on what the item is. But if I try and post this item now, if I go to posting and hit post and say yes, it's going to say you have insufficient quantity of this item on inventory. So it stops you from, uh, from posting the inventory essentially, which is quite handy because then you can control what you want and you, what you don't want to do in terms of your replenishment system. So you can go back to replenish this one and come back and post the, uh, the assembly order. Um, you can, like I said, when you do your purchase orders, you can purchase the um, conference package six directly um, and it'll increase the inventory here but it will not consume the children items or you can purchase the children items then go to the assembly orders and create it from there. In terms of your sales, similar scenarios will happen because this is assembled to stock, the sales orders will not care. They'll just deduct from the inventory available based on your assembly and you just move on. Um, that's about it. Thank you so much.